Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to the guys at Super Futura, I'm presenting an in-depth tour of a Ferrari 458 Speciale. The Speciale was unveiled at the 2013 Frankfurt Motor Show, and it comes in both coupe and aperta forms. It is designed to take an already performance oriented car and make it more lean, more powerful, and generally more track orientated. Its 1395 kg curb weight is 90 kg lighter than the standard 458, and at the time of unveiling, it boasted Ferrari's most powerful V8. Its main aesthetic distinctions over the standard 458 Italia are its new active aero components, vented bonnet, side skirts, and dual exit exhaust. This specific car is finished in Rosso Corsa and features a central NART racing stripe and gold wheels. The engine bay at the rear is clad in gloss carbon and looks exactly how a Ferrari engine bay should. It is powered by essentially the same 4.5 litre naturally aspirated V8 that's found in the Italia and Spider, but here produces 597 brake horsepower, which is up 27 brake horsepower, and 540 newton meters of torque. Its power increase comes mainly from upgrades to combustion, volumetric, and mechanical efficiency. This increased performance and decreased weight results in a 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time of 3 seconds and a top speed of 200 miles per hour. At the rear is a new two exit titanium exhaust system that exits higher up and spaced significantly further apart than the previous model. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get an exhaust piece here. It sits on new 20 inch front and rear forged wheels here in gold. They are 12 kilograms lighter than those in the standard 458 with the rears being slightly dished. The car has immense braking power provided by its CCM3 carbon ceramic brake while magnetic dampers have been utilized for a more controlled ride. Now we've looked at performance and stats, let's start our exterior tour. Its new redesigned angular front bumper provides a far more muscular feel. At the front are two active aero flaps that open up at speeds of over 170 km per hour. They reduce drag by reducing airflow to the radiators and redirecting it along the splitter. On either side are F1-esque wings that flow down from above these vents to the new winglets that help to guide air laterally. In total, the Speciale is registered to produce 210 kilograms of downforce from 125 miles per hour. Moving up, we find new wheel arch vents that increase cooling and decrease pressure inside the wheel arch, with the LED day running lights and bi-xenon lamps further forward. Next to these are small vented cooling ducts. Other than the NART stripe here, the Speciale has a totally redesigned bonnet with two vents and central ridge to help direct airflow from the aforementioned vents to either side. The NART stripe runs from front to back where we find slight ridges along the roof. Moving back down to the arches, we first encounter scooter rear shields with the slim, adjustable wing mirrors above. Below, there are new ridges along the side of the Speciale with fins at the rear. Above this, the door handles are small and easily accessible, but some believe they feel a little out of place. The rear fins below don't direct airflow into vents like in other models, but aim to provide more lateral stability at higher speeds. The side slits above channel air into the long tubes that connect directly to the engine with the fuel filler cap on the right hand side. The high rear wheel arches and sunken rear wing work together to guide airflow and provide increased downforce and cooling at the rear. There are iconic Ferrari rear lights that cut into the rear panel and an LED brake light that sits centrally on the rear wing. Below the prancing horse is the reversing camera with the exhaust below and newly designed diffuser and active aero components. The active aero slats you see here in red open up at speeds over 220 km per hour to deliver 20% more stability at the rear. With this, and thanks to the redesigned titanium exhaust system, a new high flow diffuser was crafted. Let's move to the inside. The Speciale may have been one of the last cars to feature the iconic Ferrari key with the lock, unlock and boot release controls. The light carbon doors are easy to open and reveal a well-specced interior featuring Rosso contrast stitching, carbon, Rosso, Nero and race star seat. All the materials feel of very high quality, but also very light. 
The Speciale utilizes Fry's SSC, or Side Slip Control, which is an enhanced traction control system that manages torque distribution between the rear wheels, allowing drivers of all abilities to play with the performance and handling while it keeps a moment-by-moment -moment watchful eye. There's no POV tour for this video, so I'll jump straight into the detailed interior tour. The doors are mainly gloss carbon, but with a slight Alcantara lined strip at the top and small storage net below. The car features the same type of door release as the 360 Challenge Stradale and the 430 Scuderia with two small buttons for the petrol cap and front boot catch. The sills are covered by a small carbon plate on the outside with Ferrari lettering and side and footwall tread plates made from aluminium. The rear engine bay cover can be opened by pulling the lever found below the B-pillar. Looking 90 degrees, we find the embroidered lightweight floor mats that can be customized. Moving towards the wheel, we see controls for auto park and the parking brake with exterior light controls above and first carbon wrapped air vent. In models such as the 458 Italia and Spider, there's also another control array here. Now sitting in the driver's seat, we can get a closer look at the wheel. Ferrari's signature multifunctional wheel features the iconic top mounted gear change lights with an indicator, beam control, bumpy road button and engine start to the left, with the other indicator, window wiper controls and Manotino switch to the right. The Speciale is started in the traditional tumbler fashion and does not keyless go, so one retains the satisfaction of sliding in and turning the mechanical key. As seen, the display start sequence is quite manic. The driver has three screens, from left to right, multi-option information screen, rev counter in gear display, speedo and time with warning light array above. The Manatino switch on the wheel is used to switch the car between its different drive modes race, sport and wet, and can also disable the ESC completely. These drive modes alter transmission sharpness, steering feel, revs and suspension. The same screen has four options, setup, trip, status and VDA. Unsurprisingly, the setup menu contains general information and settings for the display and time or date. There are two separate trip screens, as with most cars, and offer the usual information for average speed, distance and remaining rain. The main button can be used to navigate back to the main screen. Setup displays information about the car's current drive mode, in addition to engine temperature, pressure, voltage, and tire temp and pressure. Finally, VDA, or Vehicle Dynamic Assistance, displays traction control settings and the performance-related setup of various functions such as traction control, the differential, etc. Finally, there is also a lap timer. This control panel is housed in carbon, along with a driver and passenger-focused air vent. Below is a small control array for the car's demist and dual zone ventilation and aircon. As weight saving is a huge priority, there is no real central column, only two Alcantara upholstered cup holders with a slim carbon stalk extending up, offering controls for reverse, automatic mode and launch control. The Speciale has a 7 speed twin clutch gearbox with wheel mounted paddle shift, but as seen here can be run in auto mode. Below are buttons for the hazard lights, electric windows and the vehicle lift. Behind, there is a small storage component with a USB input and 12 volt socket. The car can be spec'd with one of three different types of seats, but here the original owner has gone for the ultimate full racing style. They are formed from carbon and are very rigid and light, but are actually quite comfortable to sit in. They can be brought forward using the mechanism underneath, tilted using the mechanism to the side, and laid down by using the pull behind. Behind the seats there is a small amount of storage space with netting, and even a couple of speakers on each side. Keeping in with the low weight theme, there isn't much else behind or between the seats, however, there is a great view of the engine bay. On the passenger side, there aren't that many creature comforts, other than two directional air vents. The glove compartment has been removed and replaced by what seems to be padding. If we look up for a second, we can see that this car has been spec with a Rosso roof, which is a bold option in my opinion. Both driver and passenger get sun visors, but only the passenger gets a vanity mirror. Between these are the interior lighting controls and exterior sensor button. Let's take a look at the car's exterior storage capacity. The door release is very easy to pull down, 
and as the doors are so light they don't take much effort to open and don't seem to swing back. The front boot is rated at 230 litres and is currently holding the substantial car cover here, although it is quite deep and travels quite far forward into the bumper. There are two small pouches on either side. The one to the left contains the wheel pump and to the right documentation. So that concludes my tour of this 2014 Ferrari 458 Speciale that, at the time of publishing, is for sale at Superfutura. You can find all their contact details in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, cheers.